Thank you for joining me and the Old Grumpy Prosperity Team for this week's episode of Grow Your Mind and Money. Tonight we are having a panel discussion that will help my girls, the Prosperous Divas, prepare for our first ever workshop in beautiful Houston, Texas. It's time for a spiritual flow. Empress Nakia, take it away. Mending what is broken. The places where you hurt are the places where you can begin to heal. The ways in which you are vulnerable are the ways you can gather new strength. There is no shame in being a victim, yet there is no reason to remain one. You are stronger already than ever and every pain you have experienced. Each time you remind yourself of that, you grow even stronger. Take a deep breath. Take a long, deep breath of fresh life energy in this brand new moment. You can do amazing things right now, and you know it. Decide that the disappointments have distracted you long enough. Decide to live more by intention and less by reaction. By mending what is broken, you discover how very much more is intact and able to do great things. Heal the hurt. Feel the strength. And with it, make life better than ever. It's time to give you a little sample of the Prosperous Divas workshop coming in April. Diva Shani, the Sunshine Princess of Poetry, over to you. Thank you, Nakia. Donald's secret for getting paid big. Have you ever asked for a raise and asked for what you thought you could get instead of what you deserve? I know I have. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know I have. How about have you ever met with a client and haggled over the prices of your services? and regretted lowering them. Done that too. So when it comes to getting paid, making the big bucks, you can either be cheap or unique. Another wealth building secret of Donald Trump's we discovered just for you is ask for way more money than you think you deserve. Hmm. How about that? Mm-hmm. So, with all of this fun stuff that we are about to dive right into just for you. Remember that distinction, the current world asking for way more than you think you deserve creates a powerful content for you to negotiate money. That's right. If you think that you deserve $10,000 for a project, ask for 50000 If you think you deserve a 10% raise, well, ask for 30%. If you want $50,000 investment, ask for $250,000. I have a friend who was contemplating a job offer. And he was making about $50,000 on his current job and thinking that if he could could make 65000 he would be ecstatic. Well, the day of the meeting, he got scared and figured if he asked for 65000 that would be too much and he might lose the offer. As a strategy, he figured that if he asked for something outrageous, everybody would just laugh and they would make it a offer. So he asked for $95,000. And before he could say anything, they said, that's a great deal. 
He was so shocked that it was the most an employer ever paid him. In that moment, he realized that he had no clue what his services were worth. And only by asking could he find out. I have a, a story myself pertaining to that. And I think that, that you'll actually understand exactly what I'm referring to. I was invited to an event um, that they do annually, and I was asked to come present my art. Now, I'm an artist, and I enjoy painting. I do it for the love of it. And I don't really think that I, I know exactly what, what my worth is. I look at my paintings and, you know, people ask you, well, how much is that? And some people will look at it and, and say, oh, that's, that's a lot of money. And some people say, oh, my goodness, that's all? Well, in any case, I was at this event and happened to be the only artist there. And I was there for displaying my art, not necessarily for sale. So... I'm in a room full of 250 people, all different senators and um, different nonprofit organizations, and I met a lot of people, and they, of course, enjoyed my art. Well, at the end of the day, the lady said, "Well, how how did everything go? Did they like that? Did they like your art? Yeah, they they loved my art. Well, did you have any offers?" I had a few. And she said, okay. She said, well, you know, everything was just for display, not for sale, and you have opportunities to connect with those people at the end of the day. But I want to make sure that you got paid for your time. And she said, well, how much would you charge it? What were you charging for today? Well, I wasn't there to charge any money. I was there as the guest. At least that's what I thought. So I told her, I told her $200 for two hours. She said, write her a check. And I thought to myself, like, oh, my goodness, I just shortchanged myself. <laughs> $200 for two hours. I mean, she, she couldn't get that out fast enough. It flew out her mouth. <laughs> write her a check. And I was like, oh, my goodness, I just really just shortchanged myself. Like, what could I have gotten? Had I just threw out a thousand dollars, she could have said, "Well, you know, I can't pay you a thousand, but I can pay you this." What if she would have mm. paid me that thousand dollars if I would have? <laughs> asked? And I was just so shocked. She that flew out her mouth so fast, and they grabbed that check and wrote that check. And I thought, "Oh my goodness!" And I, and I still think about that. I still think about that. It was a the event was called Seeds of Gratitude. And um, I was really, I was really shocked. I was like, I really shortchanged myself. And so in, in telling this story, <laughs> had all kind of flashbacks that you need to know what you're worth. And most people don't know that. So, like I said, ask for something outrageous. What if they're willing to pay that? Don't you deserve that? I think I did. I got to learn way more than two, them two hundred dollars to nearly submit to them people. <laughs> it was a nice event, after all. It was a nice event, but um, I sure changed myself. I really did. So, I have an assignment for you. I would like you to create a list of times that you accepted less than what you thought you deserved. I want you to write the reasons or the excuses you use to justify accepting less. I want you to create a list of current projects and how much you're asking to do the work. Instead of a project, it could be the price of your services or your products. Next, I want you to write the reasons you chose the prices that you are charging. Write whether the price is truly a reflection of what you deserve. What do you see about yourself when it comes to charging or asking for the money you deserve? What conversations immediately jump in your head when it comes to asking someone to buy your product or to pay for your services? 
What's really going on? What new actions do you now see possible when it comes to getting paid for what you deserve? And that's really important. I really want you to take the time and think about that, how much you're worth. I want you to share this with two to three people. Who would like to share what they saw from the assignment or from what they're creating? Me, 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 I'll say a shiny, I'll say he's a shiny. One thing I... Yeah, yeah, one thing that, uh, uh, oh, God, talk about going back memory road. Uh, as a, a young uh, African-American black man, uh, one of the biggest concerns I had was outpricing myself. Because, one, it was hard enough as a young black man to, to, to you know, uh, be hired in a prof- uh, in a professional situation uh, uh, during that era. And, you know, I'm talking about the 70s. So, uh, and uh, 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 your talent alone may not have been good enough. Now, fortunately, uh, I had a lot of talent. <laughs> and uh, for what I was working, for the profession I was working in, I did have a lot of talent. But that did, you know, I would look at if there's uh, five white guys in the room and there's me. Well, in my mind, it would be like, well, look, even if they're not, you know, like prejudice or anything like that, hey, look, who I want to, I want to hire the, the guy that's like me. And if I'm asking for more than those other five, well, you know, that's an easy choice. Well, hey, look, you know, I would have hired the black guy, but he wanted so much money. So mm-hmm. for years, I shortchanged myself, you know, ah. and what, uh, and, and, you know how much, because it was like, I don't want to lose the job or not get it. Mm-hmm. And so for years, I shortchanged myself. And, um, uh, you know, I, uh, so now, you know, I just saw all of that. And even today, uh, I think one of the hardest things is, uh, uh, especially if it's someone you know, someone you have a relationship, uh, at least for me, is is asking a fair price for what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. You know, some way like, ah, you know, and it's this and that and, you know, whatever that stuff is. And uh, mm-hmm. now I know people who are, are, are very rigorous, rigorous when it comes to how much they charge for their services. Now, mm-hmm. anything else that they've, oh, man, you know, like they, they, they'll give you money. But when it mm-hmm. comes to how much they're going to charge for their service, they're really rigorous. And I even get that they're not asking for what they deserve. Right. You know, and because one, uh, and I love how you said it, we don't know how much we deserve. But I can get the secret to like a Donald Trump, whatever. They just ask for something big and let people <laughs> figure it out. You know, mm-hmm. like you say, hey, if I need fifty thousand, don't ask for fifty thousand. You will go to jump hoops all that ask for two hundred fifty thousand. Then, well, mm-hmm. maybe I got to listen to you. And then also, <laughs> the person who got two hundred fifty thousand ain't the person who got fifty. Right. So now at least you're asking people who can say, well, you know what, two hundred fifty is kind of a lot. I I give you seventy five. <laughs> you know. So so that's what I saw. Well, thank you very much for sharing. I appreciate that, Ronnie B. Nikia, would you care to share anything? Well, um, I am one of those individuals that have been challenged. And for so many years, I was always asked, well, Nikia, charge what you feel you're worth. And, you know, I was and I am still to some degree, one of those individuals that focus on helping others so much that I forget to charge what I'm worth. Mm -hmm. And for years I was like, well, it was about seeing the smile on a person's face. It was about seeing someone be successful. It was about helping people achieve their goals, meet their dreams, 
you know, create their foundation so they can grow and they can do this and they can do that in supporting others. Even if I'm volunteering my services or I'm just doing something outside of the scope of my level of expertise, but I'm good at what I do and I'm putting my best foot forward, I don't always accept the tokens of appreciation or get the acknowledgement or the gratitude that is deserving of such because I start to realize had they relied on someone else or asked someone else, guess what? They would have they would have had to pay them, right? They would have charged them. They would have charged them and they, you know, a, a, a number beyond you know, realistic or reasonable, but at the end of the day, they would have paid for that service. So what makes me different from that individual? You know, and it's not that my labor is cheap or my service is not, you know, perfected. It's that I feel to value myself the way others value themselves. And I did not put myself on top and give myself a a, a level of... Um, of confidence that I needed to say, you know what, if this person or this organization or this association can charge these dollars for a service, similar, same, or something completely different, a service period, or a service that I feel is not valued at the amount that they're charging, somebody is paying them for that service. So I myself have to step outside of the box and stop um, undervaluing myself and begin to say no when a no is necessary. Um, begin to say, um, maybe I will uh, consider it. However, you know, these are the stipulations and these are the ground rules, and either you, you know, fall within this contract that's written, not just verbalized, or we can't do business. You know, and at the end of the day, maybe they'll come back, maybe they won't. But I have to be willing to take those steps and those chances and take that risk for people to really see the value in what I have to offer and what I bring to the table. And if, you know, it's worth it, then they'll go for it. And then business is created further through word of mouth. But, again, my lesson and and my value that I bring to this conversation as well as what I've taken from this conversation is don't be afraid to charge what you're worth. Don't be afraid to say no to opportunities. <laughs> and be willing to say yes to yourself because I yes. am worth it. Yes. If they're not with me, then they need to get behind me because I'm moving forward. Thank you so much for sharing that, Nakia. Don't be afraid to say no. Yes. I absolutely love that. Miss Cookie, did you care to share anything? Um, well, I'm from the um, very old group that um, your service, um, you dare not speak up and say um, what you felt that you were worth. Um, you were being too grateful to get the job. And um, although you worked harder than anyone else and you accomplished more than anyone oh, else, right. you still was paid less than anyone else. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. it was hard on, um, in the beginning, but I s- slowly grew out of that phase and I was able to step up and say um, I thought I deserved just as much as X was getting. Um, although most of the time I did not get it, but I did voice my opinion uh, of it. In um, later years, I discovered um, that you only get what you stand up for for yourself. Mm. And if you don't, uh, no one else is going to volunteer and give it to you. (laughs) You have to stand fast, and sometimes you have to except defeat um, in not getting the position that we really want because we um, because of our values of ourselves that we have to um, take defeat sometime and it's not um, 
a moral issue of deceit because you have um, grown from that experience. Yes. So yes. We have to Absolutely. But I, I appreciate you sharing that, Miss Chrissy. That's amazing that so many of us have walked in those same shoes, and we're not alone. So if it, if if we go through that, just imagine imagine the people that aren't even where we are now, where we woke up and we know that hey, if you can't pay me what I'm worth or what I think I'm worth, if you're not even gonna try, just imagine all of the people that that are not there yet, and we hope to get you there, and we hope to get you there soon. So here's the assignment. If you are an employee determined with one of your <clears throat> determined with one of your other prosperity seekers, how much of a raise are you asking for today? <laughs> wow. If you own a business, self or self employed, determined with other prosperity thinkers. The new pricing of your service of products. I want you to acknowledge that, which you're willing, with which you're willing to charge for your service. How much? Don't be afraid. So I want to thank you for doing a lot of work. You are coaching us, and it is appreciated. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. You have been playing great. <laughs> if you come to our workshop, Better Than Donald Trump, Grow Your Money Workshop, we require you to buckle your seatbelt for a rocket ride. Hey, I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Now, it's time for a prosperous spirit with Miss Cookie. Miss Cookie, take it away. Thank you. Ageless. I am ageless and free, just as fall turns to winter and winter to spring. In some areas of the world, I experience changes in my life that may affect the way I look or feel about myself and others. Yet there is no change in my age or physical appearances or life that can alter the underlying truth through the spirit of God within, I am ageless and free from limitations. I am a living expression of God's love and life. Young or young in spirit, I welcome each moment as an opportunity to find new ways to express my divine nature. God's love in me frees me from the limitations of the past and inspires me to live joyously now. Like new buds in the spring, I am born anew each day. I am ready to follow where spirit leads. I am ageless and free. Nakia, take us to break. Stay tuned for The Kitchen with Miss Cookie and Quiet Storm or Ronnie B featuring music from Nikki. She tracks fellows on the corner. Affirmation. I affirm and give thanks for the goodness of God in my life. Affirmations focus my thoughts in a positive way. They train my mind to envision positive outcomes. As I use affirmations, I create an inner experience that manifests in the outer. I envision good coming to me and through me, and I am strengthened and empowered. I create affirmations based on what is important to me. If I feel less than healthy, I affirm, I am strong and whole through the power of God's healing love. If I desire greater abundance, I declare, the prospering power of God is at work in my life. In the midst of a challenge, I repeat, I am peaceful and calm. 
as I create and use affirmations, I manifest perfect health, wisdom, and abundance. My mouth shall speak wisdom. The meditation of my heart shall be understanding. Psalm 49, 3. Welcome back. We give it all to you on Grow Your Mind and Money. And you better believe that we do it all with love. Okay. So something smells great. It has got to be the dish Miss Cookie's been whipping up in that kitchen. Miss Cookie, what you got going on over there? Thank you, Shani, and welcome to the kitchen. We have a great recipe to feed those hearty appetites that have been working diligently on growing their mind and money. Tonight, I'm going to share with you chili, garlic, shrimp, and new stir fry. Get those pens and paper handy. Here come your ingredients. You will boil six ounce brown rice noodles until done. Drain. The ingredients and instructions will be all intermixed tonight. You want to drain, rinse with cold water, and drain again. Combine two tablespoons of rice vinegar one and one half tablespoon of low sodium so- soy sauce, one tablespoon of honey, one teaspoon of fish sauce, and one half teaspoon of cornstarch. Add two cups of shrimp mixture. Heat one and one half teaspoon of granola oil in a large skillet over high heat. Add one third cup of unsalted cashiers. Crush three garlic cloves and one half cup of jalapeno peppers. Stir five thirty seconds. Remove mixture from pan. Add one tablespoon of granola oil to pan. Add a half a cup of cut carrots, one cup two inch pieces of green onion, and one cup of sliced red bell pepper. Stir fry three minutes. Add noodles, cashiers, mixed shrimp mixture, and six ounces of baby spinach. Cook one and one half minutes. You have a service for four. Eat and enjoy. And now it is time for the corner with Quiet Storm. Let's give her a smooch and a rose. Well, I'm going to snatch that smooch and a rose for Quiet Storm since she is under the weather this evening, y'all, uh, 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 we had to give her a little blankie so that we could get her back together here. Now, uh, and, and, oh, that, the, the, oh, that recipe is, oh, my, my, my mouth is watering. I, I can't wait to, to, to attempt it. Now, tonight we are featuring music from Nikki. She tracks fellows out of Atlanta, Georgia, with her album, This Ain't Mine. As you know, we asked the team to vote whether the track should get a smooch and a rose or if it needs more fertilizing. So we're going to step out with this first track. It's called Supergirl. DJ, roll it.
Okay, that was Supergirl. Let's get over to the panel and Nakia, Empress of Faith, Supergirl. I actually like that. Um, I'm going to have to give her some smooches and roses on that. Uh, oh. I'm going to have to listen to it again, but I really did like it, and I like that flow, that beat, and it was something that you can like. Um, I, I, I'm going to just leave it where it is right now because I can't speak. <laughs> Really? <laughs> okay, all right, all right, okay, all right. She had a spidey sense on. Okay, <laughs> Shiny the poet. <laughs> Diva Shiny. <laughs> Super girl. Um, Shiny on mute again? Uh, I, I think Shiny might be on mute again. Well, Miss of, Cookie? Of course. Super girl. Oh, of course oh, I am. Oh, she's back. <laughs> of, of, of course, I need y'all to stop playing with my mic. I think y'all be bugging me on purpose. <laughs> Quiet song. I, I like the title. Um, I like the title a lot. Uh, I like what she was trying to do with it. I like the beat. But I was waiting for some more content. <laughs> I was waiting for it to to give me something and said, I want to give up all my roses and all my kisses because for Mm. you to say, I want you to want to be your super girl. Well, you know, I walk around with my cape on all the time, so I was looking (laughs) for something something to go with that, and that didn't didn't qualify Mm. because I have to have a whole lot more to go with that to say, okay, I got my cape on, I'm 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 be a super girl, that song didn't do it for me. So mm. I'm gonna fertilize it. I'm gonna fertilize it. Oh, oh so you getting ooh, ooh, fertilizer. Uh oh, uh oh. Well back the truck up. <laughs> all right. Well, all right, we got uh, one smooches and roses, one fertilizing and Miss Cookie, super girl. Fertilize it too long, and it didn't do nothing. It just went on and on forever, and it didn't just, um, you know, I didn't get the punchline there. Uh, maybe uh, my illness is affecting my hearing, but I didn't go for that at all. Let's just give her a couple loads of fertilizer, put her out of her misery. <laughs> all right, okay, super girl. Said, 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 they were throwing the crep tonight order. Well, um, uh, I kind of liked the track, what she was, that, that, there was, it seemed like there could have been just a little more juice to it, but I'm still going to give her a smooch and rose. And, um, well, let's see, see if she can do better on the next track. It's called My Apologies. She needed from that prior track. <laughs> right? <laughs> DJ Rowling. <laughs> All right. Shout out 
That was my apologies, and we're going to find out. Shani, Diva Shani, is her apology accepted? Hell no to the no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that was that going was from so... to ridiculous. <laughs> oh, God. Can, oh, I, I want to know if I can call Darnell and borrow his fertilizer truck. Mm-hmm. And, Miss Kiki, can we go into the stash spot and go get those extra fertilizer trucks? Most definitely. And, and anywhere that we got some reserve, we might need some fertilizer. I, I just, I, I, that hurt my feelings. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. It hurt my feelings. No, the apology is not accepted. That's that. <laughs> well, I, 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 I think we got a hint that Miss Cookie uh, was uh, passing out the fertilizer, but just to check in, Miss Cookie. <laughs> Most definitely give her what. Ever it takes because she is really off the chain here with that <laughs> apology bit just didn't work for me at all. Uh uh-uh. uh. No 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 no. <laughs> right. em- Empress of faith. Does she need an apology? <laughs> We deserve her apology. I'm sorry. I I need to apologize. Woo! I'm going to have the fertilizer. Uh Uh-oh, uh-oh, the fertilizer. uh Uh-oh, she's throwing out the fertilizer. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I I will say that, uh, all right, a lot of fertilizer. Well, well, Nikki, I'll say this, that uh, I'll take your apology since you track fellows. <laughs> if you like what you heard from Nikki, she tracks fellows. Check her out on ReverbNation.com slash Nikki Fellows. And that's N-I-K-I-F-E-L-L-O-W-Z. Mm-hmm. Activate opportunity. Opportunity is not something you wait for or search for or find. Opportunity is something you embrace and activate with your actions. Opportunity is not there to be stared at, speculated about, or admired. 
opportunity is there to be used. Opportunity is not a free ride to riches or a foregone conclusion. It is a starting point. And going forward from that starting point requires work. More opportunity exists today than at any time in the history of the world. In this very moment, people around the world are seizing opportunity and making the commitment to bring its value to life. In every life, in every problem, in every desire, in every situation is opportunity. Wherever it may be, whatever form it may take, To activate opportunity, you must combine intention with effort. Opportunity is abundant and growing more so. Activate it, work it, and use it to make a big positive difference in your world. Given the theme, activate opportunity, I will activate the opportunity in others by sharing the prosperous divas better than Donald Trump grow your money workshop in the conversations I have with people I will share it and activate the opportunity mm-hmm. a world of peace and prosperity one listener at a time Until next time, grow your mind and your money because, yeah, it's a beautiful thing.